there have been a lot of research about the young people of today. We'll call them the Generation Z. You would recall that in the past we used to have, or not say in the past really, we had the millennials. We also have the adults. We have the older at heart, the younger at heart. We have them like that. But the major focus has now been on the Generation Z. Now Generation Z attempt to be between the age of 10 and 25. They are also seen as a group of very passionate people and we have actually seen how vocal they have been on global issues around the world. It's also been reported that they also tend to be more emotionally connected to issues that they really, really care about. I'll cast your mind back to the time of NSAS in Nigeria and just the recently concluded general elections where we saw how they practically changed the narrative of how the election should go. They wanted the government to be closer to them, to engage them, to let them know why we have to vote for this particular person. We saw that. And our brands and policies are beginning to key into their thinking and way of life. But what really is their way of life? Well, today on the Amina Atari Show, my guest today is Fade Kemi Adesunloye. Well, she's popularly known as Moimo. So she's going to be taking me through her world. Don't go nowhere. It's the Amina Atairu Show. The Amina Atairu Show. Finding answers. But how did you really start? What was the journey like to being a content creator? Or should I call you an influencer? <laughs> we like content creator, I prefer. Content creator, okay. Influencer now is like, pfft. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so. Well, I think like since I was in secondary school, like when I went online, when Instagram became a thing, and you know, they were the first set of influencers, all them Prissy, Diana NJ, Michelle, mm -hmm. Favor. So, like, I used to follow all these people, like, I'm, they are the ones. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, this is what I want to do. These people are making money, and I want to make that money. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically because of the money that you joined. Yeah, I also felt like, wow, this this is cool. Like, people are coming online and making money. And I was like, that's what I want to do then. And so, and so then you started? I just started trying to create all sorts of content. I mean, there's no kind of content that I think I haven't done. Maybe, like, if it's sport or physical things, I don't think I've done that. In terms of beauty, cooking, like, makeup, mm -hmm. like, has literally just... Everything. Trying anything. I felt like anything could be content. I recall when you were more like the, should I call it, um, the internet sensation. Then, I mean, you, you had your partner, your, mm -hmm. should I call him your boyfriend, your ex. Yeah. Your, you guys are not together anymore. No. You know, you had your ex, and you guys were really, you know, trending. Was that something the both of you decided to make, you know, to make you stand out? I mean, for me, I, I was actually the one that, you know, kind of started it because I just feel like I, I was young and I was very expressive with how I felt, you know, so I just felt like this was a part of my life. And I was just posting it, like, in terms of that was a way that I showed, you know, love to someone. You know, it wasn't necessarily like, yeah, let's do it. But I feel like it got to a point where, you know, when people start seeing you and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, make this content for us, you mm -hmm. know, those kind of things, you know, will also just put pressure on a relationship, oh. I think. So you actually think that social media was the reason why they, you guys had to go your separate ways or what? No, 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 I'm just saying, like, that's not why you... Okay. Go. I'm just saying, like, that is... That was something I had to face. So did you think that, I mean, did you also think that that split, as I said, then affected your sensation on the digital space well i think so because like you know when i started you know my content creation i started my on my own but eventually you know our brands kind of merged together so you know it was really hard trying to you know make people understand like yeah my brand was married to this person but now i divorced <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, and then, you know, we had fans that liked us together. So it was probably hard for them to make that transition to just being here for just Moimo hmm. or just Ernie. Yeah. You know, so but I feel like, you know, I am trying to build my own, you know, fan base myself. And it's like starting from scratch, really, because wow. we are like, people are now like, okay, what do you have to offer as just you? What is your content about? I mean, you do makeup, you do. Uh, recently, you clocked 21. <laughs> and I saw that content. I mean, you were talking about you being an adult, and I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, technically, 21 age is like, that's, like, you can now drink alcohol, you can now travel on your own, you can now, everything, like, the age itself. But I still feel very young at heart, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things I haven't learned, a lot of things I just learned. Mm. So, I mean... Have you started I, paying your bills yourself? Yes, I have, or, like... <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, now I regret like leaving that comfort of you know that shelter that your your family provides, you know. But I'm out there, you know now, so I can't go back to the nest. <laughs> but you're, I mean, you're still a student. You're not. You've not graduated yet. No, no. You won't tell us about your school life. I mean, your influencing and then or oh, allow me your content creator life and school. How has that been? Uh, it's not easy, yo, honestly. I feel like even with the fact that, you know, Unlag has been striking, you know, it makes it difficult to want to put your all into it and still be going to class. You know, I've been in Unlag for five years now, almost five years. Almost five and years. What I'm course? sitting here three. <laughs> because of the strike, COVID. Yeah, there was COVID. Yeah. So everything has just, I mean, I'm studying mass communication. Hmm. So I'm, I'm majoring in PR and advertising, and uh -huh. I find my course very interesting. I love learning about PR. Me, I feel like that's where the money is. PR, advertising, that's the money. Even content creators, that's what they do. So it's just sad that I don't really feel as into it as I once was. But my routine these days, you know, I have school Monday to Wednesday, and then from Thursday to Sunday, I don't have school. Do you like find the educational system in Nigeria interesting or are you part of those people that will say, you know what, once I collect my pali like this, I'm jetting out of the country, I'm going to do my master's abroad? Okay, so basically um, it was initially part of my plan to just get my degree and leave Nigeria just jammed and I don't know, jackpot as <laughs> they say. Yeah. I don't know. Recently, you know, I even did like a whole project on Jackpot syndrome for school. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I got to learn about all the, you know, advantages and disadvantages of, you know, how people are just trying to migrate and leave the country. And I just felt like it's probably best for me to try and hustle here mm. first. So you, so you think that you want to deal with Nigerian money, you don't want the pounds? I mean, the way you can flex and make money in Nigeria, I, I mean, in Lagos, safe, let's be specific, it's very different, like, the opportunities here versus if I, I just go there, go to UK and start up a new life, I'll just be like everybody else, man. There's a belief, you're Gen Z, you're 20, you just turned 21, mm -hmm. right? There's a belief that this Generation Z, that's from age 10 to 25, as they call it, are tend to be irresponsible, unethical. Is that really how you guys are? How the generations here? Yeah. I mean, no. I feel like that's a generalization. At the end of the day, you can always find irresponsible people, you know, irrespective of their age or what generation they are from. I mean, there are people that will never take the blame for or, you know, even review their own actions. You can find like. Older people say that even worse than the Gen Z. Mm. But I feel like the Gen Z, is, like, they're just comprised of, you know, free thinkers and very, very creative people that just go against all, like, society's norms that are already there, you know. Like, they, they challenge everything that, okay, yeah, our forefathers said we should do this. Gen Z will ask you why. What's the logic in that? And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's a good thing, you know, because at the end of the day, the age that we are in with the internet and how, like, 
communication has really impacted our lives. I know we were just thrown into it. I mean, I can't remember I had my first phone at the age of 10. I was on Instagram by 13, you know. So it's like, well, I've been exposed to so much, so much through the internet. So I think that's why, like, there's so many people challenging, you know, society from Gen Z. So, so when you say a forefather, what kind of norms do you think? I mean, most Gen Zs, they don't know how to greet. But what do you say about that? They see an adult and they go like, hi. Mm -hmm. Why hi? Like, at the end of the day, like, what is... I'm not necessarily going to say that curtain is good or bad, but, I mean, what, what does that... What, do you, what does somebody gain from that? Respect is not by kneeling down or by greeting you, you know? Those things, do they really matter as much as we try to act like they are? The Amina Atairu Show, Finding Answers. Your Yoruba, you're from a culture that believes so much in respect. Like they have greetings for every single thing. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do how do I marry that with what you just said? Like the people around you, the elders around you, do they align with your thought? If I see my mommy, I'm going to kneel down on the floor because that's my mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So why if you see I someone mean, that is like your mom? I mean, someone as age as your mom, what are you going to do? Hi. Hello, good afternoon, ma. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like also, like, you know, you want to be respected. Like, as a young person, you know, if you are going into some certain spaces. Are you going to stay and be kneeling down for them? <laughs> like if if I came uh, for like if I came to this interview now and uh, everybody obviously I know everybody here is older than me mm -hmm. and I'm here cutting oh good evening oh, good good evening good evening. <laughs> like okay well, what happens then <laughs> like okay we'll just tell you then you'll be like oh that's little girl uh -huh. You would see me as your equal or somebody that, yeah, I should respect as well because you would feel, okay, yeah, how are you, my daughter? And that's where it ends. And that is not a culture that the Generation Z respects. I, I don't know. I feel like some people, they, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's that important. Hmm. I feel like there's a lot of things from our culture that. It's not everything that makes sense. Like what? I mean, like, even just the way, like, I mean, if we look at Yoruba people, for instance, the way, like, you know, the women are treated in contrast to the men. I mean, the man is the house, like head of the home. He's the one that, what, provides for the family. He's the one that, Hello, like, Hello, he's Hello. just the one, mm -hmm. anything he says is what goes, like, you know. If a woman's husband dies, I mean, look at all the implications, like what our culture says is supposed to happen. I mean, there was a culture before that said, you need to kill twins. You know, there's a lot of things, you know, you always have to be able to challenge anything that you hear and just try to make sense of it. Okay, and if it doesn't make sense to you, then no, no. So let's go to the, I mean, you're still in school, but obviously you work for yourself. You, you are independent as you are, right? Do you see yourself working in a nine-to-five job in an office? Hmm. Why are they paying me well? You what? I mean, if I were to be working in PR firm like this now, I mean, that was some real cool cash. <laughs> I'll be happy to go there, really. <laughs> and, you know, people that work in PR advertising, that's why I'm very down to work in PR advertising, because I feel like just even the way they work, like the kind of settings they are in they don't it doesn't feel like work hmm. so you aside from PR and advertising you can't do any other kind of work like nine to five mm. no I don't think so why because it has to be something I'm passionate about to make me want to wake up every day and go to the same place and do the same thing hmm. now there's also an impression of um, young people Gen Z's always talking about mental health any small thing oh my mental health is that 
and the person is trying to correct you on issues and all that. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people's mental health is really fragile. So it might look to you like they are being, you know, sensitive or something. But people have been, really been through a lot of things that make them who they are. So, so people are fragile, like any small thing, they already feel devastated or depressed or suicidal. And I mean, just feel like people are people, man. You can't really, you know, blame somebody for how they feel about something. What's your impression right now about the Nigerian system of governance and way of life, really? I mean, I don't want to sound like a, a disappointed or just lost youth, but you know, last, I mean, it was this year, rather. Mm. This year, I didn't vote, though. I didn't even bother to get my voter's card. Well, why? Why? Because I said it from when I, I found out that, you know, Tilo was planning to run. I said he was going to win. And there's nothing anybody can do about it, because he has been, he was very vocal about it. You know, and I'm saying for this man to come out here and say that I'm even the one that made your pre your previous president president, and I'm going to be the president now, like I mean, it was never in our hands. So, so didn't you think that the fact that you didn't vote, you didn't collect your PVC, that could have also affected the choice that you may have had, the person that you would have preferred to govern the country. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that would have affected at all? You already made up your mind. Nigeria doesn't really practice true democracy. So in the case where democracy is not being practiced, are you not just wasting your time to think that it is by the people? It's not by the people anymore. It's by the government. Hmm. So you don't see yourself collecting your PVC at all? Maybe one day when Nigeria is finally free from the clutches of all these old men and politicians, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Maybe one day we can see the sunshine and Peter will be there for us or something. I don't know, but I just felt like there was really no hope. And people just got their hopes up. It's sad, but that's a fact. But you did not vote. If I voted, what would it have changed? It could have changed something. You know? Nothing. Because it was rigged. <laughs> it was going to be rigged from when he said it was going to be. Hmm. President, don't you understand? There was it was never a choice of what Nigerians want or anything. It was that was not the case. It was what he wants is to be president, and that is what he did. He got it, and nothing we say today can change it. No, but I I I believe that the more you speak about it, the more you go out there to cast your vote. There's a possibility that a lot of things could could change. If I don't vote, you don't vote. You can't actually say that it was rigged because there's a possibility that a lot of the Gen Z, who makes up about 50% of the population right now, we have a lot of young people, mm -hmm. and new people are basically the most you know, are, are popular amongst this number. If you don't vote, if you don't vote, you can't really say that it was rigged, could you? I mean, most of the people that were like, you know, really championing this whole voting and getting PVC. They were Jersey people. You know, you cannot say that it wasn't Jersey that really carried this whole thing on their head. They did. Like, <laughs> I just refused to <laughs> hop on the bandwagon. You know, a lot of my creator friends or influencers or whatever, they were all voting. You know, so, like, I think it was, it's even rare to find a Jersey person that didn't vote. Hmm. The Amina Atairu Show. Finding answers. That was Moimo giving her own perspective about the Generation Z and how they think, their language, what we need to understand, and how they actually reason life in general. So, for those of you who are still finding it difficult to communicate with them, you also find out that it is not all the young people. I mean, the people in Generation Z that literally think the way some other people think. Like she said, well, you have some adults that are, can be very rude also. And they're just normal people who just want to really understand why they should either align with policies or align with some certain culture. Until we come your way again next episode, 
stop believing that everyone is rude or unethical. My name is Amina Atairo. To have a good day.